Maria Clara at Ibarra is a show about an 1887 novel entitled Noli Mit Metang. A few moments later. Noli Mitanghere. <laughs> Maria Clara stands for the ultimate Filipina. Well, this is where Rizal and I would disagree. <laughs> Hey there, Zesties! You're listening to the Gleeful Talk Show where we share Zesty stories to cultivate the happiness and hero within and out. Here we talk about personal experiences, pop culture, and social impacts. If this is right up your alley, then please keep on listening. Before we dig right in, please follow, rate, and subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcasting platform. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. That's at at Gleeful Talk Show or visit gleefultalkshow.com. If you'd like to follow me outside of this podcast, please visit my blog, theambivertlife.com. So, if you guys don't know, I'm a Filipino living in Australia. I've been an immigrant here since three years, and before I moved here, I was living in Dubai for around three years. I'm a huge binge watcher and I like watching different types of shows just like any other Filipino. So from K-drama to fantasy shows like Game of Thrones to anime like The Spy X Family. I do have another podcast which has been a little dormant for some time, but it's called The Nerdy Fans Podcast, which is more dedicated to reviewing the shows that me and my co-host watches. This podcast has evolved a lot since I created this and I realized that no matter what type of topic I wanted to share here, the thing that to remain certain is that I want wanted to talk about culture and society on whichever facet and hoping this would resonate with you Zesties as well as we become better versions of ourselves. Now, why was this intro relevant to this episode? You'll see later on. <laughs> On the last episode, I briefly talked about the colonial mentality I was wrapped around in when I was growing up. And now my views change and my eyes a little bit more open. I recently discovered a TV show in the Philippines called Maria Clara at Ibarra. A big shout out to Please Pause PH and Anyong Tira podcast for their posts on Instagram as I have discovered this show through them. Now, for those non-Filipino Zesties listening, even though this might not be entirely about your history, I'm hoping that this will still interest you. So, Maria Clara at Ibarra is a show about an 1887 novel entitled Noli Mit Metang. A few moments later. Noli Mitanghere. <laughs> a Latin for Touch Me Not, written by our national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal. Comprising 65 chapters and an epilogue, this novel exposes the abuses and inequities of many Spanish Catholic friars and government officials during his time. He fittingly dedicated this novel to the Philippines whose miseries and sorrows he brought to light in an attempt to awaken them of the truths concerning the ills of their society. Paradoxically though, the novel was originally written in Spanish, the language of the colonizers and the educated at that time. This was written as a parody and satire of the Filipino society under the administration of the colonizers and the characters of the novel represent various kinds of people inhabiting the country at that time. I just remembered when I was reading th this in high school for the first time and we were just asked to read about it and the teacher and the class will talk about it after we have read everything. I was like, oh, why was this written like this and that? And I was a bit lost on what Rizal wanted to say on the first few chapters of the novel but after discussing it in the class and the teacher has told us about the symbolism of these characters then I realized more that 
hey, yeah, this is what actually he wanted to say at that time. So with the characters, we have Crisostomo Ibarra, who represents a small group of Filipinos who had a chance to study abroad and dreamt of improving the country. Padre Damaso represents the Spanish friars who were fathering illegitimate children and covering those candles. Maria Clara, on the other hand, stands for the ultimate Filipina. Well, this is where Rizal and I would disagree, perhaps. More on that later. So, with this show, it's in the GMA network. And what pleasantly surprised me was the modern twist to it, where a modern-day character seemed to have, quote-unquote, transmigrated to the novel, which was set around the Spanish colonial period. Now, this is unprecedented in modern-day mass media in the Philippines, uh, as far as I remember before moving abroad. Before, the most popular shows were the Mexican telenovelas where we see these white and blonde women who doesn't look like us and it's just usually about love stories and betrayal and the rich and the poor, yada yada yada. It's always just like that. When we had our own telenovelas, it was also patterned like that as well. Well, I guess that's how these big corporate mass media companies see it, right? Whatever is popular with the masses, that's what they are going to do as it will deliver them with a higher ROI. Unconscious of the fact that they can also bring change or cultivate society through whatever they put out there. I guess everyone, most especially those who have an audience, big or small, has a responsibility to cultivate the better or the worse to a society. So the point is, we actually don't have shows about our own or if we did, it wasn't that much of a hit and vice versa. Don't get me wrong, we did have movies about history like General Luna in 2015, Kazan's Game, and Goyo in 2018, but most of these were movies. Well, there was Tresse, which I really liked, and actually we did have an episode about that in the Nerdy Fans podcast, if you're interested. It's also on Netflix. So, TV shows with caliber and with a message, that's what I think was missing Filipino mass media TV shows in modern times. Back in the day when I was a kid, we had Cine Escuela or translated as science show. So it was a show for kids to learn science in a fun way. Hiraya Manawari or translated as Reach Your Dreams, another educational TV show providing values education for children through adaptation of Filipino stories and legends of original stories. So it was really interesting back then and we actually actually have a lot of very interesting stories but it was just not brought up in the modern day mass media but these types of shows were scarce in the philippines as far as i remember we were always drawn to foreign shows and i was even one of them unfortunately but who wouldn't, right? If the mass media tv shows are not really enticing and after the success of the other woman movie, most TV shows portray marriage portrayals and third parties. So I wasn't interested in that and there wasn't any other interesting shows. So I turned my interest to other countries' TV shows. So back to Noli Metanghe. <laughs> Noli Metanghere. I'm still at around episode 12 of the show or something like that. And I think the latest episode is around 20 something. What I liked about it is that the show is about Noli, but with a twist. In this way, kids or Gen Zs would be able to relate more while learning the literature at the same time. So the premise is the modern day Maria Clara or the Gen Z Maria Clara, nicknamed as Clay, being a working student, couldn't really understand the essence of why she has to study the novel Noli Metanghere, one of the most important novel in the history of the Philippines. She was frustrated that even though she's doing well in her major subjects, she flunked her history class because she couldn't read the whole book because of work and personal struggles. For her, what's the point of reading history anyway? There was a scene where she was saying to her professor that 
why would she need to read history where she is gonna be a nurse and it's not gonna be useful for her profession as she will move abroad when she graduates anyway? being extremely frustrated with the living conditions in the country. And she even said that it's hard to love a country like the Philippines. And this really hit home to me, being an OFW and being an immigrant as well. So that was one of the reasons why I move abroad. It's just really gonna be hard to support your family if you're earning a normal wage in the Philippines and with all the inflation and all the corruption and all of the taxes and etc. So it's it's really, really hard to just stay in the Philippines. Maybe if you're a businessman, then maybe you, you're gonna be rich there but if you are just in the working class unless you go for business or anything like that or maybe like a tiktoker i don't know <laughs> but it's not really sustainable especially with healthcare healthcare in the philippines for some reason is really bad but we have a lot of nurses and it's because a lot of nurses or a lot of people take up nursing just to go abroad which is so sad right because then no one's gonna be left in the country to take care of the sick people. And that's what I experienced personally when, you know, my mom and dad were sick. So the healthcare system itself is so bad. I, I feel like I'm just ranting right now, but that's really the truth. And that's from personal experience. So back to Clay, who was talking to her professor, that she was having a hard time loving the country. And for those listening to this podcast who haven't really seen the real philippines or experienced it firsthand or maybe if you're rich then you wouldn't understand so i hope that there's no judgment here and so the professor having some sort of magical powers had led her to read a special type of noli metanghere book and that's how she migrated to the story then seeing the seeing the barot saya or the filipiniana the national costume of the philippines on mass media tv is a breath of fresh air it's actually Actually really beautiful and I remember when I was in elementary or high school where we need to be in our national costume like every August like it's the one a week or the month of language and I dreaded doing this because we had to find a costume and it, it's pretty scarce to find a costume that was back in the day to think that it's our national costume can you imagine then according to the Philippines Folk Life Museum Foundation, the wearing of Barot Saya originated from the Spaniards and it was worn throughout the 400 years of Spanish colonization. The ensemble has a lot of variations. The most popular one is the Maria Clara dress, which again was inspired by the epic novel Noli Metangere. It features a floral length paneled skirt or of silk or satin and it consists of four separate pieces, the colorless waist length bell sleeved camiso the bubble shaped floor length saya the stiff neck covering called panuelo and the hip hugging knee length tapis or overskirt on the show they actually mentioned what's the use of the panuelo which was very interesting to me because i didn't know about that <laughs> maybe we were told about it years ago and i was just wasn't interested for those who have read Noli Metanghere, well, literally perhaps all Filipinos, know that Maria Clara's parentage is not fully Filipino. In the book, she was described by Rizal as, quote, not having the small eyes of her father, but like her mother, she had them large and black beneath long lashes. Her hair had almost golden hue. Her nose of a quote-unquote correct profile was neither sharp nor flat. Her mouth reminded one of her mother's, small and perfect, with two beautiful dimples on her cheeks. Her skin had the fine texture of an onion layer, the whiteness of cotton. Unquote. I remember when I was reading this novel for the first time in high school, not knowing yet the real history, that made me really suspicious of her parentage. And in the end, I was right. She was described as the most beautiful lady in the town of San Diego, or basically the story. And although Rizal patterned her to his childhood sweetheart, and as an epitome of a Filipino woman, I felt that with her parentage, strictly speaking, 
then she isn't, right? Her skin was white as cotton and her, her nose is the quote-unquote correct profile. Doesn't really sit well with me. And with this, the readers of Nolly would think, and we had been for centuries, that this is what beautiful means. And yes, beauty is definitely in the eyes of the beholder. For centuries, the Filipinos and our colonial mentality led us to think that having white skin and the correct nose profile, same as our colonizers, represents beauty, which is such a sad, sad thing, right? And take note, Zesties, I'm not excluding myself in this. It literally took me almost 30 years to open my eyes about this which is so sad i think it's really hard to be out of that colonial mentality because we have been colonized for 400 years basically most of us are maybe half filipinos right and my lineage as well like i know that my great grandmother was half spanish so so what can we do anyway I'm not an expert in history and anything about Rizal, but since Nolly is a parody and a satire, I'm hoping that he also kind of embedded this satirical representation of Maria Clara's beauty, where Filipinos would think that the half-Filipinos are the most beautiful of all. Well, I mean physically, so I don't really know if that was what he was going for as well. So yeah, I'm not an expert. Anyway, for centuries, we have regarded Maria Clara as the epitome of femininity, the role model to Filipino women. When I was growing up, we were raised to be like her, to be mahinhin, which is Filipino for reserved, modest, and shy woman. If you are not as mahinhin as Maria Clara, then you are not a real woman or guys won't like you. Basically, But scholars have reportedly denounced the insinuated culture of Maria Clara, notably that of Filipinas being submissive and quiet towards men, a stereotype that was first brought by the Spanish colonialists. Historians have pointed out that the original, the OG Filipinas, have historically been more vocal and have served positions equal to, and some even higher than men. You go, girl. But sadly, this changed because of our colonizers. Really, really sad, right? What do you think, Zesties, if we would not have been colonized, what could have we been? I guess we'll never know, right? And you know what's annoying with the colonial mentality that we have? Some of us still have it, which is all the more sad. Although I know that some have also opened their eyes, but I couldn't blame the people who are still under this bubble though. And this is where I think mass media in the Philippines should take charge through what's being depicted on TV and all of that. And I guess us podcasters as well. So I know a lot of podcasters like Banana Q Podcast is all about Filipino content. So kudos to those podcasters as well. This Maria Clara and Ibarra show is a start. A pleasantly surprising start. I like that they've added the twist that the Gen Z Maria Clara is actually the strong, independent woman as symbolized by Clay. She speaks her mind, her truth, and is fierce. I think that a woman like that is admirable. Before, because we were raised to be quiet, to be submissive, and anyone who is other than that is loud or is out of her mind. So I hope that this show will continue to steer this colonial mentality out of our minds, especially with the younger people back in the Philippines. Although we cannot rewrite our histories, we shouldn't let our history define us as a colonized nation. Why not think we should be paving the way for this and that, right? I like that the show is really doing its best to show the period where it was set. Although it's pretty obvious that most of the actors have a hard time speaking the formal Filipino, but they are doing their best. I got a bit sad as well thinking that I'm not really good in speaking Filipino. I mean, because I was raised in Cebu and in Cebu we have a different dialect and we have a filipino subject which most of us are not really good at which is again a very very sad thing i heard that in schools right now they are teaching the mother tongue and a lot of people were despising it i used to say like why what's the use of it like 
people are going away of, out of the Philippines anyway. But that was wrong of me because we should be able to teach our children, the younger generation, what our language is. And we should cultivate our lang- language more. And which is, uh, again, I'm more sad about this for myself that I'm not as good as... I should be as a Filipino in my own language. I don't even know some of the words in Filipino now because we mix some Filipino words in English. So I don't know if there is like a Filipino dictionary or something like that. That would be interesting. And if you guys know about it, please let me know. I also like the settings as well. The buildings, the architecture, and even the outdoor settings. I always wonder where they shot those scenes because in the Philippines, these types of architecture is not common anymore, sadly. You know how it is in other countries that a certain building or house is listed as a cultural heritage and you cannot tear it down. I know that Intramuros is such, but I do hope that it's getting maintained and I hope that there are others as well. So Filipino zesties who are listening, please let me know if you know something else. I also really liked the message that the show is depicting. It's depicting the woes of the younger people in the Philippines who are so frustrated with the country, mainly the inequality of wealth and the corruption of powerful people leading the poor getting poorer, no education, and so on. I also liked that in one of the scenes, the main character, Clay, said that the change should start with the rich practically saying this is indeed correct the poor people are so busy trying to survive they couldn't champion for change so it's more in the hands and the responsibility of the rich and the powerful to start the change for good but i wonder is this happening in the philippines Or am I being too skeptical, perhaps? Lastly, although I would like the show to stay true to its source material, I'm curious to see whether they will and how would that affect the show and the message. I'm hoping that they will give the source material justice and at the same time reignite patriotism amongst us. Then that would be a great result. Or am I asking too much? (laughs) Kudos to the people behind the show as I think this is a really good direction direction for Philippine prime time. I also commend the actors, most especially Dennis Trillo, the one portraying Crisostomo Ibarra. I think he's perfect for the role. He really embodied the Ibarra I imagined. Great work also to Barbie Fortes, the Gen Z Maria Clara, a good example of a modern Filipina woman should be. I will keep on watching the show and I do hope this will be picked up by Netflix or some network overseas to garner more audience and to show the Filipino history. I also hope they will continue to the second novel, El Filibusterismo. <laughs> El Filibusterismo, and also do other Filipino novels like Florante at Laura. Oh gosh, I remember both Nolly and Florante at Laura, two of the books that we have to read over summer break when I was in high school. Anyway, Zesties, I hope you enjoyed this episode and my side rant. If you'd like to support the show or if you like this episode and would like to give me a cup of coffee or two, please head down to the episode notes where you can find a link to give me a cup of coffee or two. Thank you for the Zesties who have been keeping me caffeinated each month. Please share, rate, and subscribe to this podcast and please do let me know what type of episode you'd like me to work on in the future. How about you, Zesties? Will you watch Maria Clara at Ibarra? What do you think? Keep the conversation going on the comments. I'll see you next week.